Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and welcome to the channel. I'm really glad that you're here. I know I say that every week, don't I? But I'm really glad that you're here. Now, today, I want to talk a little bit about beliefs and, and artistic power. This is, okay, some of you don't know what I do, but I coach artists to be to go from where they are to where they want to be, wherever that is, whatever they do. And it's absolutely fascinating, but there's one thing that really makes a difference in whether or not an artist succeeds or not. And this one thing is what I'm going to show you or tell you about in this video. Now, I know that talk videos are probably not as important or not as interesting or not as exciting. And you want to see those demos, you want a technique, you want this. But this is actually more important than any of those. So stay tuned because this is going to make a difference in your art if you do it. We all have beliefs about ourselves. You grew up thinking one thing, somebody told you this or somebody told you that and you took it on as a belief. For example, in my high school, my senior year, my last a little few weeks, we went to the, everybody went to the counselor, and my counselor told me, "Don't even bother, Gwen, going to college or applying for college because you're not smart enough." Now, Mrs. Jones was wrong, but did I know that? Nope, I didn't know that. I took it on as mine. I took that as a belief. I wasn't smart enough, so. She colored my world. That's all there is to it. Mrs. Jones colored my world. And you have beliefs that have colored your world as well. Now, the difference is, is are those beliefs truths? And the answer is generally and almost always, and if not 100%, they're not. So your belief as an artist makes a difference in how you paint. I believed Mrs. Jones, and then I had to give her away, but it took years and years to do it. So what about your beliefs as an artist? Are they, are, what do you think about yourself? How do you think about yourself as an artist? Well, this is what we're going to talk about, because this is artistic power. This is the way you get power in the studio, because what you think about and what you think your beliefs are determine what you be can become. Now, as I said, I coach artists and, I have, and I've done it for many years. And probably the most important thing that I know of no greater thing that influences an artist more than the image that they have of themselves, the confidence they have of themselves. That determines how they're going to approach the paper, the, the, the uh, easel, the canvas, no matter what. This determines how you're going to approach. Think of it as a tennis match at Wimbledon. You do not go out on a on center court wondering if you're going to be good enough. You better know you're good enough. And that's what I want you to do is to know that, yes, I am good. My art is good enough. So this is the power that I'm talking about. And the power is kind of like a dimmer switch. You know, you push it up. It goes, wee, and it, it, the lights are on, and it's great. You put it down, and it's very low. Well, let's install this dimmer switch into our brain right now. And we power that baby up in our brain, and we're talking. We are in a positive mood, and we are, we are doing well. Now, I can hear, and, and then, of course, if it's low, then you're on a negative mood, and, and things don't go well. And what that does is it kills your creativity, and 
I don't want that. So we want to keep that at upper levels all the time, your energy, your thought process, and how you think of yourself as an artist. Um, Let's take an example. A painting isn't going well. Hey, I know that. I Okay, I will show you this as a demo next week. It's, it's not going well right now. I wanted to do a black and white painting, just black and white. I love black and white. Well, I get going and I look at it and I think, okay, this is okay. Well, I don't want to do okay. And you don't want to do okay. You want to do really good. You want to feel like this is my, this is the best. And I looked at it and I thought, it needs a little color. Now, I'm, my goal was to do a black and white. So I add a little color and I add this and I add that. And I am in a mess. I don't know what to do. But I will, I'll let you know what I do. Because next week I will have worked on it. I will have filmed it. And we will see what I have done. It won't be done, I'm sure. But you will get the, the bit with it. So Here's the thing, is that as this is going down the tubes, this painting is going down the tubes, I had to make sure that my brain, my dimmer switch, was up instead of going down, saying, oh gosh, am I just going to have to paint over this? This just looks awful. No, I'm going to fix this so it will work. Now, there are times that I do have to either scrape it off or paint over it. And you know what? That's okay too. But when I do that, my dimmer switch is still on high. Don't let failed paintings get you down because failure is the key to success. How you think about yourself as an artist is going to translate to the canvas. And when it doesn't translate beautifully like you want it to, like mine is it doing. It's the process of giving birth. It is the process of allowing the painting to talk to you and say, I want a little of this. You thought you were going to do black and white. Well, listen here, girl, I'm telling you, I want a little color. So this is when artistic power comes into play. And as an artist, when you think this way, it is going to make such a difference. You know, thinking is it. But as Shakespeare said, nothing is, but thinking makes it so. So keep this in mind. How you think about yourself as an artist is how you approach your, your painting. Keep it, keep that dimmer switch up. I want it on high. So leave a comment and you haven't subscribed, please do so. I love your comments, and I love seeing who has subscribed. So have a fabulous week, and I will see you next week. Love you. Bye.